Hey guys, so this weekend it was Father's Day and what we did, my family went to see Jurassic World. Now I am an amazingly big dinosaur fan, I'm not sure if you know. And so I was absolutely dying to see this film. And I thought that from a dinosaur fan's point of view as opposed to a movie fan. I don't watch that many movies but dinosaurs just love them. So I thought I'd do a little bit of a review of the film. So first of all, I'll give you a quick idea of the story. So many years later, after uh, Hammond's original idea of Jurassic Park, the park has finally become a reality, and the whole theme park is exactly what he had envisioned, envisaged, and more. You've got uh, Chris Pratt's character, Owen, who is a raptor trainer, the raptor whisperer, as they like to call him. Uh, and he's working with the raptors under the prospect of perhaps them becoming militarised. And you've got uh, Bryce Dallas Howard's character, Claire, who is sort of the organiser. She basically organises the whole park, this massive place. And she just does it all by herself, no problem. And this whole theme park is a massive success. And her two uh, nephews are come to stay whose names are Grey and Zack. Jurassic World, as it's now called, has been open for so long that people are now bored of dinosaurs. It's just like going to the zoo, which I can't really imagine, but it does give a bit of an idea in our society that we get so easily bored that we constantly need new things to keep us entertained. So, what Jurassic World has decided is in order to bring in new customers uh, to the park, they have used their incredible genetic information and modification to create a new super dinosaur. Uh, but of course, as you can imagine with the Jurassic film, nothing is quite as it seems and, you know, problems kick off. You can imagine what sort of things might happen. The story was fast paced, I never got bored in the film. Sometimes you get films where you just sit in there waiting for a bit of action, but I don't think that ever happens um, in this film, which is really good. Uh, fantastic end scene, that was one of my biggest things. It, you could say it's predictable, but I didn't see it coming, certainly. A big thing, a massive thing in this film is the references to Jurassic Park. This is film uh, bypasses the second and third films, and mainly just talks about the first one. And it talks a lot about all sorts of things related to the first film. Uh, Hammond's dreams, uh, becoming a reality and there's so much not just in the story but repeated incidents in the film that are so similar in this Jurassic World which some people would say it's just repeating old material which is sort of cheating but you can understand from the uh, producers point of view that if they know that something's gonna work it makes sense to do it again. The next category is the characters they're very two-dimensional characters, and what I mean by that is they're very stereotypical of themselves. For example, Claire, um, the main woman character, apparently always wears heels throughout the entire film, despite running away from dinosaurs and chasing through forests. The, t the teenage boy, Zack, he... <laughs> there's one scene where uh, a T-Rex is about to eat a goat, and Zack is direct, uh, distracted from this because he gets a phone call and he thinks, oh, I'd be much more important than a T-Rex eating goats. I don't think any teenager in their right mind would bypass this great opportunity to see a T-Rex more than a goat. So I think it's annoying, but it it is there so that you can see the transition from him in the beginning to a really close relationship later on in the film. His brother is, I think, what I would be like if I was to go to Jurassic World. He just loves everything, he wants to see everything, he's so mad, he loves all the information, he knows all the quizzes, <laughs> he does all the... he looks through the glass with awe, and, you know, that'd be what I would be like, I'm sure. The next part is the thing that, you know, everyone watches the Jurassic franchise for, it's the dinosaurs. Now, again, the CGI was fantastic, and a lot of people say, was it really so much better than the 22 years since the first film? And when I first watched the first film, I was still amazed by it, and I watched this one. But when I watched it and went back to Jurassic Park, you can really see the incredible 
improvements in the technology. It does look so much more realistic. Uh, the detail is so much more refined on the creatures. There were some key scenes that really stood out and the dinosaurs really made it. The Mosasaur who features in the uh, trailer, he was fantastic, the, the Mosasaur scene. Another thing that was mentioned that could have been a downfall to the film was the fact that they had to bring in a made-up dinosaur, this Indominus Rex, to entertain people. So almost as within the film, people are getting bored of dinosaurs in Jurassic World. People are getting bored of dinosaurs, supposedly, in the films. So they need bigger dinosaurs. It's, it does a bit annoy me that. However, I think the way that the end scene is um, brought together sort of justifies the use of the Indominus Rex in the first place. One of the big key storylines is also, is it ever possible that the dinosaurs could work with the humans? Because the whole idea is Owen is the character who is the uh, raptor whisperer, as I was saying, uh, who uh, has these four velociraptors, who I'll see if I can remember. Blue, Charlie, Delta, Echo, there you go. And he attempts to try and control them, uh, which goes off, on and off throughout the uh, film. But it's this idea, could uh, hum humans ever sort of control dinosaurs and get a sort of a relationship as a, not really a man and a dog, because that's a bit too domesticated, but maybe a man and a sort of wolf. The, this is the impression that they're sort of wolves, they're dogs, but they're not quite as tamed. They're still ferocious, but they have just a, they have a respect for each other, the human and um, dinosaur thing, which is not something the previous films have suggested. Other things I meant, I uh, found out in the film, the music, that classic theme tune that sounds a little bit like this. That one. Uh, that was used quite a lot in the film, and that really just get, it brings you back to the good times. It's just a fantastic tune that really, even if you're not enjoying what's going on the screen, it makes you enjoy it, because it, it makes you... It goes in your head and it says, you're, you're meant to be thinking this is amazing. Yeah, it's like, just clicks. This is amazing. The theme park, the way that the theme park was created in the, in the trailer where you would have seen the gyroscopes, uh, one of the attractions, there is a scene where youngsters can ride on baby dinosaurs. That is a pretty epic addition. It's a perfect representation. I think that is brilliantly how John Hammond uh, envisioned Jurassic Park to become and uh, for almost every single film we go to see my dad is just uh, drowsily awoken at the end of the film he's just had a nice little doze away but this time he was awake the whole time which shows you just how exciting it was so overall I would say this is a fantastic film it gives you the dinosaurs it gives you the albeit 2D stereotypes characters it gives you a fantastic fast paced story it gives you the theme park that you've always dreamed of Go and see Jurassic World. I've been Dan to 743. See you next time.